house of the Lord. Father, we ask that you would bless the word today, God, as we study the end time prophecy, Father God, yes. the rapture of the church next week, Lord God, the Antichrist, the false prophet, the things that will happen during the seven year tri tribulation period, Lord, the, the ten days of all, the ushering in of even now, Father God, into, into the media and all the things that take place, to, uh, the Antichrist, there are many Antichrists that have gone out of the world, Father God, that are a false picture of who God really is, and we come against every supernatural power and every lie of the enemy right now. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? Amen. amen. Some of the questions asked over the years is, uh, what is the rapture? What will happen during the rapture? Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. And, and I'll be sitting some and talking and getting up some, but 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3, out of the New King James Version. The Bible says, Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts. Now the last days, they will be many that will begin to start uh, 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 with a certainty, begin to deny the literal rapture of the church, that will begin to speak of, one of them uh, is called an amillennialist, where people don't believe uh, that there will be a rapture of the church. I actually met a pastor that went through Fullerton, uh, uh, Fullerton Theological Seminary, he didn't preach out of the book of Revelations or anything prophetically, because he didn't believe that there would be a rapture, that this is the place here where everything will be perfected. And, and so that's called an amillennialist. And, and there's others that will uh, say that he's delaying his coming. And scriptures talk about that, that he's delaying his coming and he's not coming back. And, and so they have plenty of time to live life like they want to. And I want to tell you something, folks. In the last days, the Bible says, and it's mentioned in detail, that it's going to happen, that we're going to be caught up unaware. People are going to be living and, and living life, living ungodly lives, living like they want to. But let me tell you something. Jesus is coming back for righteous people. For the Bible says that he's coming back for a church that has neither spot nor wrinkle. He's coming back for a church that is watching. The Bible speaks many times about watching and praying and observing and being ready for Jesus when he comes back. And so if you think you can go out and play games upon God, let me tell you something. This is not a game to play. Amen. Because we're going to split the, split the eastern skies. Amen. We're going to pass the Milky Way. Amen. We're going to meet the Lord in the cloud of the air. If you're not ready, you'll be left behind. So I want to look at the, the, the description of the rapture today. And I believe that we're living in the last day generation. Now when the Bible talks about there will be a great falling away, I believe really that is speaking even into the, the tribulation period. Where it will be very hard. We have three and a half years of the tribulation period. Well, it, will be, it will be hell on earth. The false prophet, we'll talk about that next week, will usher in the Antichrist. And you don't want to be here. I used to know a man who was a Christian, and I went all the way through the book of Revelations. When I first started teaching it, he said, Pastor, I'm going to be an end-time saint. I'm going to be here during the tribulation period. And by the time I got uh, done teaching out of the book of Revelations, he said, no, I don't want to be here during the tribulation period. I want to be here. I want to go up to heaven when Jesus comes on the cloud and receives us up yeah. in the paradise. And so we're going to look at the description of the rapture this morning. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, the Bible says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and thus shall we always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Yes. In Acts chapter 1, verse 11, the Bible said, Who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come back in like manner as you have saw him go into heaven. In other words, he will be back upon the earth. The same way that you see him go up, he's coming back. And somebody say amen. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 27, the Bible says, For his lightning comes from the far, as far as from the east and flashes across to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, if you've ever studied uh, 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 the weather, when lightning crosses uh, cross the west and the east, it already, it's done, it's finished, it's like boom, like that. 
and so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So if you put these together, it's talking about that Jesus is going to come back, the King of glory, the, the Lord of glory, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords, that he's coming back suddenly in such a way that everyone will be able to see it. Many are saying, well, how are they going to be able to see it? It's in the twinkle of an eye. Because he's coming back on a cloud, and, and, and we're going to meet him in a cloud in the air. Now, if you ever think about what the cloud is, the cloud, I believe, is the robes of righteousness. And they're white robes. And how do you understand that we are covered over with the robe of his righteousness, not our righteousness? So we will have a robe that will be placed upon us. Amen. And, and I think about that day when, when the rapture takes place. The TV channels, the satellites, all the different things, and the videos, and all the things are, are looking, look at what happened. But how many of people can actually see things and they still don't believe? Miracles can take place, but that doesn't mean people believe. You can see uh, people healed, and, and I've known skeptics, even in the church, will say, unless I see it with my own eyes, I don't believe it. And, and they'll begin to try to explain uh, the rapture away. But we understand that Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back for you. And you need to be ready. You need to be watching. You need to be aware. And you need to be prayed up and living godly and righteously for God. Because he's coming back. Some people have the question is when and how will Jesus come for the believers? Well, the Bible says that no one knows the day nor the hour that he's coming. Nobody knows. But it says to watch and be ready. When I was a young man, I heard preaching on, on the rapture all the time. But you very rarely hear people preaching on the rapture anymore. But the Bible says to remind each other of that and to encourage each other of the coming of the Lord. And the word Maranatha in the Bible actually means, well, back then when they were thinking, they thought back then the Jews thought that Jesus was going to come back any time. And so Paul had to show him a teaching that, you know what, he's going to come back. And the people that have died, the Christians, you thought he was going to come back in your lifetime, that he is coming back. That they are not sleeping, he says, as you think some sleep. And so Paul begins to explain that. But today, I want to let you know that no man knows the time or the hour that he's going to come back. But Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. And we need to be ready. In the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 32, the Bible says, But of that day and an hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father in heaven. Now, despite all the people that claim to know exactly the year, the month, and the hour that Jesus uh, uh, is coming back, the Bible says no man knows but the Father which is in heaven. And when the Father gets ready, he's going to send his son Jesus, who is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he will descend down from the clouds to gather his church. And immediately after Jesus appears, the Bible says that the head, that immediately after he appears, that there will be a sound of the trumpet that will announce the appearance of royalty, which will be Jesus Christ in the clouds. And the Bible says that the Prince of Peace, the Lord of glory, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords, and all that is dead, that is in their graves, graves will be split wide open, and they'll meet the Lord in the cloud in there. And after that, they which are alive and remain, which is us, I believe, I believe we are the last day of church, amen, that are alive and remain, shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the cloud in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord, encourage and comfort each other with these words, amen. Now, we're going to have new glorified bodies. Can you imagine those that are alive, vanishing, in a, in, a, in a millimeter second, in the twinkling of an eye? Cars will be empty. No drivers in them. Major trouble on the interstates. Engines running, but no occupants. Wrecks all over the place. Water boiling on a stove where somebody was cooking, but they vanished. Probably caused fires and, and all kinds of disarray. Home, empty homes, no one living there any longer, but they're gone. Amen. And, and then, well, I believe it will be such a powerful thing that when we take off, amen, that the whole world will know because there will be catastrophic uh, uh, explosion when we leave. Boom, we'll be gone when we meet the Lord in the cloud in the air. It will be like this. Airplanes, you know what, this is a true story that, I forget which airline it is, but if they have two different pilots, they make sure that 
One of them, if they're both saved, they won't hire one that's saved. Because they're afraid if the rapture happens, the plane will crash. And, and, and so, folks, there are some in the world that still believe that Jesus Christ is coming back. And we need to be ready for him when he comes. Can you say amen? Amen. Planes will fly over. Islands will vanish. And all the believers will be sitting at the heavenly table with the marriage supper of the Lamb. Can you say amen? amen? The next day, the headlines, the local, national, and international news will scream out, millions missing with no explanation. They will try to explain it away, insisting that UFOs have, have, have actually come and abducted millions of people off the earth. Ms. Johnson will say, well, I was talking to Mr. Jackson, and the next thing I know, he vanished like Star Trek, but even faster than that, amen. <laughs> And it will be chaotic scientists and, and hate mongers and false religions and theologians. Let me tell you about something about a theologian. How many believe in Jesus? Raise your hand. You're a theologian. Even atheists are theologians in what they believe in. So we like to you know, categorize, you're a theologian. No, you're a theologian. If you believe in the Lord, you're a theologian. But the theologians, those that are philosophers, will try to explain what has happened. Psychologists, and they will all try to explain what's going on. But there will be one on earth that will already be here who will know what happened. And he is called the Antichrist. He will know that they've gone to heaven. Churches will be packed with freaked out people crying out, Lord, come and get me. But then we have to face the tribulation period. You don't want to face that. And the reason why they have to face the tribulation is because they were unwilling to repent when they had time. And so churches will be packed. Some ask, what is the rapture? It's a literal gathering of the church. It is the only way to fly, somebody said, amen. <laughs> Come on, somebody. It is the only way to fly airborne into heaven, past the Milky Way. Oh, boy, we up there with Jesus in white robes of righteousness with crowns put upon our head. With the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Signs of the rapture. The Bible says that Jesus comes to gather his bride, his bride at the church. And just before the Antichrist comes, the man of lawless, lawlessness is revealed. The church will be out of here, I believe. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 2 through 10. The Bible says, Let no one deceive you by many means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. The man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is of God, called of God, or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, that I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Excuse me. Only he who now restrains will do so until he was taken out of the way. There is something that is restraining the mystery of the Antichrist coming. And when the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy the brightness of his coming, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all the powers and signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteousness and deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of truth that they might have been saved when they had a chance. Yeah. According to Paul, the Antichrist won't be revealed until the one who holds back the power of the sin and lawlessness is taken out of the way. And I think that's the church that is filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, and you know, I, I do believe that the Holy Spirit, now here, here, people are going to get saved during the tribulation period, but we're not going to talk about that subject today because we can go on for months talking about uh, what prophecy speaks about. We're talking about rapture today. And now, according to Paul, Paul said that something is holding back, and I believe the church, you and I, that are filled with the Holy Spirit are going to be out of here right before the Antichrist comes in on the scene. Now, if you do the whole study of that, the false prophet will come in and usher in the Antichrist. 
And he will sit upon the throne and proclaim himself to be God. And then that's when the eyes of the Jews will be opened and they will flee to the rocks, rocks of Petra, which is a hiding place. Can I tell you something? Let me let you in on a secret. You can't hide from God. Amen. Amen. You can do everything you can hide under a rock. And God knows where you're at. Amen. Yes. He knows where you're at. And John 16, verse 8, the Bible says that when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because of the ruler of this world will be judged. Now the ruler of this world is Satan and he will be judged. Can somebody say amen? amen. And so will those who follow. That have been bitten by the demonic powers and the manifested powers of the enemy. That have lies and seducing spirits that destroy keep people away from God. And John, excuse me, let me, let me go here. What I know is this, let me just say this. And this is the part I love. The Bible says that in the twinkling of an eye, blink your eye. In the twinkling of an eye. It could happen any second. It could happen right now. Amen. In the twinkling of an eye, in the blink of your eye, no one knows the time or hour. But it just as in the days of Noah, the Bible says, so shall come the days of the Son of Man. Now the days of Noah, people were getting married, and, and, and for 120 years, Noah was preaching righteousness, and nobody wants to hear him. And he said, God is going to send a flood. He's going to flood the earth. You need to get right. But they're eating, they're drinking, drinking, they're handling their affairs, and they miss out what, uh, what uh, Noah had been preaching on. He's warning them. Let me tell you, God gave them 120 years to repent. That's a gracious God. Can somebody say amen? amen. He gives you time. But when the Bible says, and the Bible has a word, that, two words, it talks about when it's reached its full measure. In other words, that's it. God's not going to have patience with you any longer. He's giving you time after time after time after time to get right with Him, and you refuse to do it. That's what happened in Noah's day. He's preaching the Word of God for 120 years, and they're laughing at Him, and they're partying, and they're doing their thing, and they're making business, and they're having fun, and we're doing what we want to do. And all of a sudden, amen, the comp composite of the rapture is that Moses brings the animal, battle animals in, brings his family in, and God closes the mouth of that boat. It's really a type of a composite, what you call a double reference, reference a prophetic meaning of the, you know what, of the rapture, that time is too late, and they're banging on the side of the boat, and God says, I gave you a chance to repent for 120 years, now the boat is sealed, I'm going to flood the earth, and you're going to die a destructive death and drowning, because you, are, you did not repent and get right with me. Say amen, don't take the shout of the preacher. Take it away. You don't want to be here. You don't want to be here because if you're left behind, you have to face the tribulation period. And it's a horrible time. A persecution, misery, times of death, starvation, and torture. See, it's very important that we understand the rapture. If you're here today and you say, well, what's the difference? I'm going to live the way I want to live despite the rapture, whether it comes or it doesn't come. But let me tell you something. The rapture is not a take it or leave it type of thing. Say amen or oh The rapture, rapture is not a take it or leave it type of thing. And so we need to be ready. In Luke chapter 21 verse 36, the Bible says, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before and stand that you will be able to stand before the Son of Man. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 says, But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Now, if it was already saying that back then in the biblical times when they were writing it and getting the word of God, and it says, you know what, to watch already because the time is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. That's one thing you need to understand. When the Bible says to be watchful, when it says to be watchful, do you know what it's talking about being watchful for? Anybody know? You can take a guess if you want to. Be watchful that Jesus is coming back. That he's coming back. Be aware. Have an awareness. Matthew chapter 25 verse 13. 
Again, it says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. And so Jesus urges us to be ready. If we want to go with Him, we need to be watching for Him. Watching, praying, and ever ready for His appearing. We cannot be comfortable in the things of this world. If you've been stake being and uncomfortable with the things of this world, you need to deny your flesh, to pick up your cross, to get back with God and follow Him. Because Jesus is coming back in the twinkling of an eye. And if you're not ready, amen, the mouth of that boat, so to speak, will be closed with the deposit of Him coming. That we're going to split the eastern skies. We're going to meet Him in a cloud in the air. And you're going to know, you're going to see your uncle, your dad, your dad's there. All of a sudden, boom, he's gone. Your mom, there, boom, she's gone. Whatever it may be, your uncle, your cousin, your brother, your sister, whoever it is that are living righteously for God and waiting anxiously for His appearing, you can be said, there'll be some in church, amen, that are playing games with God, and then all of a sudden, bam, they're gone, and there's a couple left. And you'll know, you'll begin to weep out to God, crying out to God. But it's too late. It's too late. Hope I scare the AG double hockey sticks out of you today. Because the fact is, it's going to happen, folks. Jesus urges us to be ready. We can't get comfortable with the things of the world. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Yeah. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world to abstain from the desires which war against your soul. Live in such lives and among the pagans that they, may, that, they, that they accuse you of doing wrong, that they may see your good deeds and glorify the Father, God, or glorify God on the day He visits you. Now this is talking about you live in such a righteous way that although he, they, they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds. How many know that the enemy doesn't always wants to distort something that's good? I found that out just recently in, in, in the, my job where I work at, and, and I'm off right now. Uh, for a moment to the doctor and see what happens, they send me back or I retire. <laughs> but there's people that claim to know the Lord. You know, a lot of people claim to know the Lord. Most Christians in America say that they're saved. But they live like hell. You're a Christian, amen, brother. I'm, I'm a Christian. Are you really? You're a Christian on Sunday and a devil on Monday. Come on. You're living life. You cannot live a double standard because when they said that the Bible says you need to be watching and observing and praying. And I'm telling you this because I love you. Because I want you to make it to heaven. And we need preachers that preach the truth. Come up here, I'll hand it, go and scratch your back a little bit. That's all right. Okay, me, hi, and go out. You have time. That's all right. I was like you when I was your age. Hey, Amen. You go out and party and do what you want to do. And all of a sudden, the rapture takes place, and I'm gone. You're going to hell in the handbasket. Because I didn't have enough guts to tell you the truth. I'm not going to do that. We don't have a lot of time. You don't have a lot of time. There's going to be a heavenly reception. Tens of thousands and tens of thousands upon somebody we can't even number that will be standing there with Christ. And the Bible said that God will wipe away every tear. Anybody ever cry? Wipe away every tear from your eye. That we will have a supernatural, incorruptible body that will no longer suffer disease and pain. Can somebody say amen? No more pain. Come on, somebody. Amen. No more disease. Supernatural bodies. That, that have been glorified bodies, that are incorruptible bodies, that no longer suffer disease and pain. Those that die, you can stand with grandma, amen. Mom, amen. your kids, your children, 
Even this one, let me say, the baby that you were born in, amen. I just heard a prophetic thing on TV the other day that touched my life. A man had a vision about heaven, and he said this woman had felt guilty because she had boarded a child, and she seen these two little kids on a hill, and these little kids rolling down a hill, and she seen two little blonde-headed kids, and it was the two that she aborted, and all she had to do was open up her arms, and those little kids ran into her and jumped into the mother's arms, amen. You might be filled with guilt today of your past, but it's all gone when you make it. Down. Amen. I feel good. <laughs> Amen. Supernatural, incorruptible bodies. Awesome. The Bible says that the saints will be wearing crowns and dazzling white robes of righteousness. The bride, the church, will be adorned for the wedding with Christ, our heavenly groom. Through his grace, all the works that we've done, the things that we've done, you're going to be, God's going to bless you. And he's, going to, he's going to give you crowns, the Bible says. And there are actually six different crowns that we will receive. You may not get all of them. You might get all of them. It depends on how you live upon earth. I'll name them. The first one is a crown for those who love us as parents. And that's in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. I'm not going to put all this on there because there's a lot. So that's a crown for all those who love us as parents. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. If you're taking notes, you can write that down. The second one is the crown of enduring trials. How many have ever endured trials? The Bible says that you stay faithful. That's in John chapter 1, verse 12. The third one is the crown, the crown for those willing to feed the flock. Those that are willing to teach what they've learned. Amen. Brother. Amen. Those that teach little kids. Amen. Amen. Those that learn something and they teach people Gabriel. Amen. Those that are Sunday school teachers. Amen. Or maybe you're teaching your kids. Or maybe you're discipling another person. The Bible says, for the crown of those willing to feed the flock. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 through 4. The crown for those who are faithful. How many are faithful? Amen. Amen. We live in the last days. Amen. Where a lot of people aren't faithful anymore. I was talking to a pastor down at the Bible conference on Thursday. He's talking about he can't believe how many people, men of God, that were in ministry at one time that have stepped down that don't even go to church anymore. Mm. That once preached faithfulness. But now they turn and they by delusion. The Bible says in the last day, we'll talk about that next week, there'll be a strong delusion. A smoke screen that will look spiritual, but it's really an ungodly nature of the Antichrist. You don't want to miss next week. Bring somebody. It is the crown for those who win souls. Amen. Come out on a Saturday. Let's pass out some flyers and win as much souls as we can. The Bible says that they that win souls are wise and they shine like the stars in the firmament. Amen. You know how far a star is? Amen. You can see it shining. Amen. You shiny man. You shiny woman. You out there winning souls. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19 speaks of those who win souls. Sixth is the crown for those who Master their old nature, the old man, the old nature. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 25 speaks about that. You see, once we receive our crowns, we will sit at the wedding feast, prepared for the bride and the church, the church body of believers. And the Bible says that it is a church that is without spot or wrinkle. That we've been purchased with the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, who died for us, who paid our penalty in full. When Jesus said it is finished upon the cross, it was signed in his blood. Can you say amen? Yeah, amen. Now we've heard about the sacrificial lamb in the scripture. Where they would, uh, I don't know if you've ever studied it, but they had two lambs. They had the scapegoat, remember that? They had one that would be killed, excuse me, the goat, scapegoat. And another one would be, that would be, they would be, they would have blood sprinkled on it. Seven times it released. And you know what the number seven means, right? Completion. And so one would be the sacrificial lamb, which was God, can you send, sending his son, Jesus Christ, in the flesh, the triune God. And he had been slain upon the cross for us. But in three days, amen, rose again. Amen. The split, he split that rock wide open, walked out past that into freedom. And over 500 people see him alive. He's the only one you can go to Confucius' grave and his body's still in the grave. You can go to Buddha's grave and his body's still in the grave. You can go to all the prophets' graves and their body's still in the grave. But Jesus, I walked past the stone and the stone represented the law that I come to fulfill the law. The stone represented what holds us back. But when 
Jesus walked out past that stone, past the law that binds man up. He said, it is when he was on the cross. It is finished. Woo! Come on, somebody. It is finished. Let me get back to my notes. Got the rapture of the church. We will escape the tribulation to come. See, what does the rapture allow us to escape? Let's look at Revelations real quick. One-fourth of mankind will die in Revelations 8-7. War and famine and wild beasts of the earth. 25% of all people will die during the tribulation. On that, on war, famine, and wild beast, that's on one. The next one is uh, one-third of vegetation will be burned up, Revelations 8-7. Here's one that's scary to me. The gates of hell will be opened. Hordes of locusts the size of horses will come on the earth, allow to sting men like scorpions, and their pain will last five months. Men will be crying out to God in excruciating, lingering pain to kill them, but they will not die. Now, if you've ever studied anything about the scorpion, I remember doing a, a, a study on that. A scorpion, back in the Roman days, the Roman soldiers would stand at attention, and they could endure pain of any kind. But when a scorpion, scorpion bit them, it was such a, it, 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 it was so painful that they would lash out and scream out in pain. And for five months, men and women that have chosen to be here and not serve God will be in pain, literal pain, that they'll be crying out that they can die, but there'll be no relief. Worldwide famine is another one unlike anything we've ever seen in Revelations 8.8. World War. There'll be blood. Check this out. 200 miles. 200 miles of blood. Blood as high as a horse's bridle in the Valley of Jezreel. It's called the Battle of Armageddon. One third of all people will be killed. Revelation 14, I mean 14 verse 20. Every person on earth will be now. I don't know if you've been, how many's ever had a boil? Amen. I just got, I got a little psoriasis, but I, not, I, I imagine, you know, think of Job covered with boils. He's got potsherds, he's scraping it, and it comes back and it's hurting, he's burning, he's itching. He can't sit, he can't stand, he can't sleep, he's in pain, he's covered in ashes, he's crying out to God, well, this is what's going to happen. There will be a worldwide, great running boil that will fester over every individual's body on earth. They won't be able to walk, lie down, and they won't even be able to sit without excruciating pain. Revelation 6, verse 2 through 11. The seven seas, the oceans of the earth will be turned into blood. The streams, the basins, the homes where we have hot and cold water will be hot and cold blood. People will die because, of, uh, because they have, don't have water. Man only lives three days without water unless they just drink the blood. Terrible. Terrible. Sun scorching on the earth. Now, I know it's been hot lately, but it's going to be a lot hotter than that during the tribulation period. You do anything, they're talking about the ozone layer and the, and the gases and all the restrictions that we have. It's, uh, trying to help the, the atmosphere and, and because the sun will break through and there'll be no way to protect people. Men's skin will be burning. Fires will be breaking out uncontrollable, burning and killing livestock, burnt to the ground, uh, vegetation destroyed. Revelation 16, verse 8. The Bible said the mighty men and the kings of the earth will gnaw on their tongues in pain and crawl into caves and beg God to kill them. Revelation 6, verse 15. The Bible says that the earth will shame severely. Anybody ever been in an earthquake? Amen. It will be so severe that the seas will disappear, much like a tsunami that goes out and comes back in. And the earth will be violently shaking, and the sea will disappear. Puerto Rico and Hawaii will be covered with water. Every building will crumble. Millions will be trapped beneath the rubble with no aid. Revelation 16, verse 8. That's a picture of what's going to take place on the earth. I don't know about you. But I don't want to be here. I do not want to be here. I see people today, I see them all the time. People are, are escapist, escape, escapist. 
Well, I'll get, I'll get through it. I'm not an escapist. I'm practicing, practicing for the rapture. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some make a joke around. They jump in in the air. One day you going to jump, you're going to be snatched off the earth. Amen. In the twinkling of an eye. Amen. You're going to fly, fly past the Milky Way and say, check that out. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to meet him in the cloud in the air with robes of white that represent the righteousness of the saints made righteous, righteous by God. Have a crown placed upon your head. We talked about the crowns. Amen. With jewels in it. And you're, you're going to be adorned as the bride to the groom. Amen. And sit down at the marriage supper table with the Lamb of God. Amen. You think you've had steak now? Amen. You think you've been good now? Amen. At the banquet table of God, at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. There'll be food that you never tasted of. Money can't buy it. You cannot buy your way into heaven. You can't be good enough to make it to heaven. You, 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 can't, you can be Mr. Goody Two Shoes and claim you've never done anything in life. But I'm going to tell you something, amen. You're going to split hell wide, wide open. Unless you get right with God. I ask you a question. Do you want to escape this? Do you want to escape it? Then you need to get right with God immediately. Before Jesus comes back and returns. The Lion of Judah is coming back. The love of our souls, the Bible says. The Prince of Peace is coming back for the, his bride. But you must be ready. You think about the Jewish, how they, they teach it, that, that it talks about the bride and the groom, and the bride and the groom may leave for up to three years, I believe, and he'll come back, and he doesn't step foot. Remember Pastor Ken preached about that? He doesn't step foot into the bride's house, and he calls the bride, out, bride outside. That's what happens. Jesus isn't going to step foot on the earth the first time when the church is raptured. He's going to call us up. So does the groom call the bride, the Jewish bride. He says, honey, I'm here. Let's go to the house I prepared for you. You've been waiting for this. And now we're going to go in and have our honeymoon. Amen. Well, you know what the Bible says in all the crowns and all the jewels and everything we get. Amen. We're not even going to really care about that. When we see the Lamb, when we see God, the Bible says that we're going to take them off and throw them down at His feet and begin to cry out for a thousand years. We're going to have a worship service. Amen. Yes. People come to church and don't feel like singing. Well, you better start like it, Satan. You better start like worshiping because you're going to worship for a thousand years. Amen. You have a loved one that died and the Bible says that a day with the Lord is as 1,000 years, and a 1,000 years is as a day. So if they've been dead one year, they've been dead one second. They're going to see you, man, amen, and it ain't no time. Live in their space in heaven. Amen. There is for us here. We're decaying. But when you get up there, you're going to live in eternity. Amen. Amen. Yes. You're either going to live eternity in hell, or you're going to live eternity with God. It's up to you. It's your choice. Church today, the Bible says, is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is promised to no man. It's time to get right. Years ago, me and my uncle were fishing up here in California Aqueduct. And we're on the backside of it. And I remember going up this dirt road and getting out and, and going what we call drowning a few worms. We went out to fish. And for no reason, somebody started trying to shoot us. And we can literally hear the bullets. You ever been shot at? You can hear them whistling through the air. Just going over. So I hit the ground. I was freaking. We're going to die. And I can hear the bullets just hitting the bushes and stuff in the dirt by me. And I'm like, we're going to die. Somebody wants to kill us, and why? We're target packs, open carny. <laughs> My uncle gets up and he takes off running. I, I'm thinking, this guy's crazy. <laughs> He's going to go get him. I said, man, they're shooting bullets. And I stayed down in the dirt. I'm going to tell you something. There's a real target practice that's going to take place during the tribulation period. And we, we'll, we'll get into this as we teach this, but in the tribulation period, you have what the Bible calls the false prophet. 
the false prophet will begin to bring in or usher in three and a half years later the antichrist is going to come in on the scene the first three and a half years of that tribulation period you'll be like a you know, be like, oh, everybody's thinking, all things cool, everything's okay. They explain why the Christians left and all these different things. But then all of a sudden, amen, all hell is going to break loose. And the Antichrist is going to come in on the scene. And he's going to set himself upon the throne and proclaim himself to be God. And the Bible says that 144,000 Jewish virgin men, not the Jehovah's Witness, by the way. <laughs> not what it means. We'll begin to evangelize the earth. 144,000 Billy Grahams, amen. amen, evangelizing the earth. The rest of the Jews will go fly to the rocks of Petra. Some believe that's America that's flying them on the wings of an eagle, it says. You know, the rocks of Petra, we don't know. The Petra is still there today. If you study Petra, it's a town that is hidden strategically back in the rocks because they're going to realize the truth. People will still get saved during the tribulation period. But they're going to have to die a martyr's death. They'll be killed. There'll be scorpions all over the world stinging people. You'll have to take the mark of the beast. Amen. And you're here now and you study all these different things about, about the chips that they put in the hands. How many heard about the job where they actually have chips where they go in? And they go in and they read who they are and they go into their jobs. And they, they ever ask me to put a chip in, I'll tell them, no way. I quit. I don't want your chip. Time to get right, folks. Maybe you're here today, you know, you think, well, you know what, I know. I, I, yeah, yeah, you know that's what they used to say in the Bible. Oh, you know, he's just delaying his time. Or maybe you're like an amillennialist. You don't believe that those, you don't believe in the rapture. Let me tell you something. You're going to hit, you're going to rip hell wide open. We won't see you for the slope. Because when the time comes, you're going to hell unless you get right with God. Amen. Let's pray. There's a real peaceful time that's coming. And that real peaceful time is when there's real peace. He's called the Prince of Peace. The mighty God. The everlasting Father. And I ask you today, are you ready? Are you ready that when Jesus comes back and the dead in Christ and the trumpet is sound by the archangel and the dead in Christ, their graves wide open. Model names where their bodies are will be split out. And they'll be with the, um, Jesus in the cloud in the air. And those that are alive will remain. Are you going to be one that gets caught up to heaven? Or are you going to be left here? Let me ask you a question. Are you saved today? Really think about it. Are you saved today? I want you to bow your head and close your eyes for a moment. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Because this is a serious time. And I want you to think about your life. How are you living? Are you living for God? You, uh, you know what? You're living. I'll tell you something. Some of you are living on borrowed time. You've been playing with God too much. Amen. And your time's almost up and you need to get right with God. And you say, Pastor Tom, I want to give my life to the Lord. I'm not a Christian. I'm not saved. I want to get right with God. Raise your hand. I'll pray for you. Anybody at all? I want to get right with God. I don't want to play games with God. Yes, I have been one that said, you know what, maybe the next day, maybe the next day, but right now, I want to live for myself. But that's you. Be honest and raise your hand and say, you know what, I want to get right with God. Anybody at all? Then I want to change the service. Stand your feet in this place right now. The Bible says that it's appointed to every man, every woman, wants to die. You're going to die.